So with macronutrients, it's your, you know, if you have a food and you break it down into your protein, your carbs, or your fat, that's your macro. So macro kind of like large picture, right? And if you shrink in and you think micronutrient, smaller picture, it's what is that food made up of in terms of minerals, vitamin content, antioxidants. So what type of benefit does that food provide you other than just energy, right? Like uh, satiety, calories, it's beyond that. And so a lot of times, you know, a lot of times individuals aren't even thinking about that part yet because we haven't developed the understanding of what is this food providing for me in terms of my weight loss goal or my get more energy goal and feel good throughout the day. Oh my gosh, Caroline, welcome to the Root Cause Medicine podcast. Girl, I'm so excited to have you on today. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Well, for people who don't know, Carolyn O'Connor and I work together at uh, Metabolic Mentoring University, and she is a registered dietitian and coach at Nutrition Dynamic and the director of education at MMU. But we are talking today because yesterday we were both saying how a lot of people just don't know how to shop for themselves. They don't know how to yeah. cook for themselves. Like, right? They just never get taught these things. If they didn't grow up in a household that encouraged it or taught it, we surely don't learn it in school. And so we're going to pick your brain today about these basic things people awesome. need to know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Before we get started, though, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, how you got into this, what you stand for, and then we'll jump into the questions. Definitely. So I had a little bit of a health journey on my own through college and then heading into my early 20s. Um, I had found fitness at the time and then kind of dived into, you know, learning about nutrition and and how to cook and how to prepare, you know, healthy balanced meals for myself. Um, but I quickly realized that that was not the full picture. So then, you know, taking the dietetics route, I really started to dive into more of the the food as medicine role and and looking beyond just the macros because there's so many so many layers to nutrition education and like the deeper you go, the more in the hole you are um, about finding more information. And so that journey kind of led me to where I am working as an integrative and functional nutrition certified practitioner. So helping my clients, you know, one-on-one and, and helping them build healthy habits, but also going beyond that and helping them, you know, repair internal messaging between systems and improve their their lab work and they want to you know they want to look good but they want to feel good too so we're focusing on the inside to get the result on the outside so my own journey kind of struggling through that is what led me to be so passionate about helping others uh because I went through my own journey I'm like I went through dietetics and I don't even know half <laughs> of this stuff. Like how how could anyone else possibly have the tools and the resources that you need to like truly live a healthy, vibrant lifestyle in today's society. So, yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. I That truth. I mean, amen to that. I think a lot of people listening, one, what's interesting is a lot of people just don't even know what the word macro is, or they associate yeah. right macro with like, well, I'm not a bodybuilder. So why do I need to know what Definitely. macros? And I thought, oh my gosh, actually, I even got that comment the other day. Somebody made a comment about, you know, I, I don't talk about, um, well, macros and food, you yeah. know, like, that's not my thing that I talk about on my social media. Hormones is predominantly what I talk about, but I had somebody who said, I, you know, I don't know what a macro is. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Yeah. That's a hard one. But honestly, where I want to start is what do you see when people come to you as their integrative health practitioner? What are the common concerns? What are the struggles they're going through? Why why are they seeking you out? Because I think that'll help the listeners like put an aha moment to it. Like, oh yeah, that's me. That's exactly what I'm I'm working with right now. Yeah, I think a lot of people are dealing with. Uh, they may not title it food fear, but like food questioning, habit mm -hmm. questioning. Should I be doing this? Is this the right food? And they get so. Uh, overwhelmed with all the messages that you know social media and google and the doctor and like everyone is telling them something different and so they get to a point of overwhelm where they just come and they come into their session and you know we're going through their food log and they they literally are just at the point where i have no idea 
if this is right or wrong. I don't know if it's serving me. I don't know if it's making me worse. I'm just questioning everything that I'm putting, you know, into my body. I don't know how to eat for my lifestyle. And so it's this just complete feeling of overwhelm, sometimes paired with shame and guilt, because a lot of individuals think that we should know how to eat because think how many choices we make every single day about the food we put in our body. It's such a large percentage of our entire life when you look at it and we're never taught. And so we feel like we should know. And so a lot of times we haven't even gotten to the point of asking, asking for help. Um, and, and that's, that's what I see predominantly is just an overall questioning fear type of mentality around, around food. Where do you start when you have that person who comes in and says, is there a perfect diet? What's the perfect diet for me? I don't know what to eat. I read that I should cut all this food groups out. So I cut them all out. I have nothing left to eat. Or I'm so frustrated at this point, I'm eating whatever I want because I don't know what to do anymore. So where do you start? So typically I'll start with walking through what a day of eating looks like. And this goes just, it's, it's farther beyond a food log, right? Like we can sit here and talk about all your different types of food that you put in your body. Like I get it, but it's also your routine. Like when do you wake up? What's happening at that point in time in your household? Are you getting kids ready for the day? Are you, you know, rushing around in 10 minutes to prepare yourself for work and then dive into the car? So it's not just the food, but it's, How are we going to get the food in? How much time do we have to make food? Do we need a quick and easy option? Can we do something a little bit more elaborate? What type of things are on your grocery list? And so we dive into the basics of that very like simple structure and kind of help you navigate. When I wake up, here's what happens. Here's the time that I eat. Here's what that meal looks like. And then we start diving into the nitty gritty of those specific meals. Okay. So- one of like the easiest tools that anybody can use. It doesn't matter, you know, um, what your nutrition education background is, what your lifestyle looks like. It's the balanced plate method. And I literally am a broken record. My, if any of my clients were to listen to this, they'd be like, here she goes again, talking about this balanced plate. But it's it's so simple to understand. And it visually, like, you're looking at your plate and essentially you're taking 50% of your plate and you're putting a vegetable on it. Whether it's leafy greens, it could be salad, it's any type of veggie. And then you're taking 25% of your plate and you're putting a protein on it. But not everyone knows what a protein is. So then we also have to talk about, you know, what is that macronutrient? And then the final 25% of your plate is a starchy, heavier carbohydrate. So again, a little bit of, you know, education there on what is the difference between a complex carbohydrate, a simple carbohydrate, what type of carb should be on my plate. Um, but it it minimizes the overwhelm when we learn those kind of baby steps because when we're not worried about portion size or weighing our food to the exact gram and logging it, it's a visual representation that takes a lot of the stress out of the choices that we're making for our meals. And this is very different than the traditional like food pyramid that yeah. I grew up with, which is the base is all carbs all the time yeah. and then went up from there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like the difference would be the the food pyramid would be a big plate of pasta where the entire base is pasta, which is a really heavy carb, right? And then on top, a little bit of protein and then maybe like a teensy little side salad, right? Mm-hmm. But if you switch it to the balance plate, you can still have the pasta but you confine it to that, that smaller 25% portion of your plate, then maybe you're doing, you know, ground turkey meatballs or grilled chicken on the side, and then a larger side salad and maybe even some broccoli, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same meal. You're just visually shifting it. Um, And I find that a lot of individuals, they just find it very simple and easy to follow. All right. Well, let's go back to the original question then. What is a macro? (laughs) What is a macro? So when we talk about this, you know, I always talk protein first because that's that's a little bit, um, it's usually the easiest for people to connect the dots. Um, So think any type of poultry, meat, seafood, eggs, some dairy is going to give you protein. Um, And then we're looking at carbohydrates and fat as well. 
Um, I always talk about fat next because it's also a little bit easier to associate with certain types of foods. So your oils, your butter, um, avocado, nuts, seeds, and where people start to feel a lot of overwhelm and not, not always know how to categorize is definitely the carbohydrate side of things. Um, there's a lot of talk about what, what a carb is. Sometimes, you know, individuals think that maybe anything that's processed is a carb. Um, there's, I've had a lot of clients who have that, you know, misconception. And so we kind of break that down, uh, and, and look at that, but a carbohydrate, you know, you're looking at your food groups, like your fruits, all of your veggies, but then also all of the heavier items, right? Like pasta, bread, um, potato, rice, quinoa, your grains. And so we can take that even, I mean, we could talk about carbs for this entire, <laughs> I don't know how far you want me to get, but the macronutrients are the, to put it simply, are the very basics of all the different food groups that you're going to pair together to make a balanced meal. When you're meeting with your clients and they're sharing their food journal with you or talking to you, do you find even in people who have maybe done studying or trying to eat healthy, that they've got a pretty good grasp of that? Or even with these people, do you feel like we have that ingrained mentality of carbs first or carbs heavy when they taste good, they make you feel good, you know, their comfort and then protein, fats, veggies, being on the smaller side, or do you find that nowadays more people are starting to get that 50% veggie first and then going from there? I do think that there is a larger percentage, like as the years have kind of progressed with me doing one-on-one -on -one counseling, I've seen more and more individuals come in and have a, a greater understanding. I mean, sometimes I look at a food log and I'm like, Ooh, like you, like, this is amazing. This is beautiful. Look at these meals. But I also think that there is a larger percentage of the population that swings back and forth between that. So we go, you know, really restrictive with the carbs, really restrictive with food groups. And then maybe we go out to eat and we have like massive pasta and the bread roll. And uh, like, you know what I mean? It's, it just piles on and then they don't, they get really frustrated because they feel as though they're doing the right things and they're still not getting the result because they haven't quite, I always tell my clients, you got to live in the gray area. Like it's so black and white of like, don't do this, or we're going to go all in and we're going to do everything. And it's more of you really got to get comfortable living in this gray area where you can have the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. um, a common example that I give for this is like, if you're going to go out to eat and you're going to have a burger and fries, right? Like maybe this is your, your uh, free meal. You love it. You always get it when you go out to a restaurant. Cool. Like I love a great juicy burger and fries, right? But if we're talking about the balanced plate and eating all, all of our meals in proportion, there's a bun on your burger, which is really, really heavy level of carbohydrate. And there's also fries, again, really heavy level of carbohydrate there. And so we're really out of balance when you actually consider that meal in terms of the plate method. And so I'll say, which one do you care about more? Do you love a burger with a bun or do you just, are you a diehard fry fan and you want your fries? So pick one and then you can sacrifice the other. So you do a burger with the bun and you get a salad on the side, or you do a lettuce wrap burger and you eat your fries and you love every second, you know? It doesn't have to be so I can never have it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important for people to hear because, I mean, this conversation today, obviously there are people out there that are um, eating a particular plan, right? They're carnivore, yeah. they're paleo, they're vegan or vegetarian. And this conversation is a lot more of that 101. I mean, this conversation is a lot more before that step because- yes initially, you know, people get told, oh, first of all, carbohydrates are bad, right? They're all bad. They all cause diabetes. You're going to die. Don't eat carbohydrates. So it became, and then there was fat. No, don't eat fat. You know, everything had to be fat free, you know, from yes. decades ago, you know, and still to this day, I have, I have women that are like, oh no, 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 I don't, I don't need any of that. I don't eat fat because that's bad for you. I'm like, oh yeah. my goodness, there's so much misinformation out there. So what do you, how do you, work with somebody who says, who comes in and it's like, Oh, I don't eat carbs. Cause those are bad. And I don't eat fat. Cause that's bad. And, and yeah. then they're all out of balance. 
Right, exactly. So typically the way that I'll do it is again, go back to that standard of like walking through their day mm -hmm. and taking what they are doing and making very small tweaks to each individual meal or snack um, and pairing them together that way. But I think it's interesting that you mentioned those tools are really helpful after someone's developed an understanding of the basics, right? Like we can still use low carb. We could still even use low fat in cert like certain situations, right? They're tools, but it's not, in my, in my opinion, that's not a, a, a lifestyle, yeah. right? Yeah. Like it's a tool. And so differentiating between that and knowing how to support your lifestyle first. So you come in, you learn the basics, you understand what is a protein, what is a carb, what is a fat. You know how to look at a nutrition label and break down and say, this carbohydrate that I'm choosing, like this loaf of bread has five grams of fiber in a slice and says it's multigrain. This one also says it's multigrain, but has six grams of added sugar and no fiber. And it's like, mm, I don't really know if that's true right? Like we need to know that level of education first. And then from there, you've developed your like very baseline foundation of what does health look like long-term? And then you can kind of add on layers of, of more advanced tools, yeah. like short-term keto, right? And, and get a result that we're looking for. Um, but rather a lot of people get stuck in that and they live that way for years and years and don't understand why they aren't seeing change, why they don't feel good. Yeah. So, and I'm glad you said that because I think, um, when you look at the larger America or world, you just go to the airport. I, I was traveling yeah. on Sunday and you just go to the airport and you can see that baseline information of nutrition has not, is not there. Now yeah. in our circles, and I think for a lot of people listening to this podcast, potentially they maybe have more advanced knowledge. They, they right. feel that, you know, know that they eat a more balanced plate. They have a better understanding of macronutrients and micronutrients, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, they've ad adapted to, you know, foods that bother them. You know, they've, they've sort of like honed in a little bit, but when you go totally. to Wal Walmart, God forbid, or you go yeah. to the airport, um, or Costco or Sam's Club, you look around and go, oh, but that's not how the majority of the world, especially in America, yeah, is living their life. They actually don't know how to read a nutrition label. So can we get into that? How do you read a nutrition label? Yeah. So first, you still got to get the education, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> your, your protein, your carbs, and your fat. Because if you look at a label and you don't know what those are, then it's <laughs> like, right. who cares, right? So let's learn the protein, the carbs, and the fat first. Um, but the biggest thing that I actually, a really easy way to use a nutrition label to help you understand what that food is made of. I always tell my clients, you're going to read, you know, you'll see the protein, you'll see the carbs, you're going to see the fat on there. Whichever one is the highest number in grams, it is most likely that that, that food, that product is in that food group. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you're not going to look at a nutrition label for a chicken breast and it's going to be like 30 grams of carb, you know, unless it's breaded, maybe. OK, so if we go down that route, we could get real complicated, but it helps you decipher, OK, which food group does this fit into? And then you break it down further and you say, OK, you, typically now they'll have carbohydrate. They're going to have fiber underneath your carbohydrate. So your non-digestible car carb essentially that's coming through there. You can't break it down. You can't use it for energy. Um, and then it'll actually say added sugars now too. So knowing, you know, the difference between if you, if a, and if an apple had a nutrition label, right? Like you're going to have carbohydrate, there's sugar in an apple, but it's a naturally occurring sugar. It's very different than looking at applesauce where it says five grams of added sugar. And they're actually taking sugar, putting it into the product to make it sweeter, Right. Um, and so being able to break down your nutrition label that way as well. So first thing is deciphering which food group is it a part of. And then my favorite thing is taking multiple products that you're looking at and comparing to kind of figure out which one is going to be your best choice. Mm. So, I mean, a lot of people are like, don't buy anything that's in a package or if it comes in, you know, like, and that's great. But there are also a lot of people in the population who maybe can't afford to do so, or this is what they have accessible to them. And so 
having the education to choose the best one of the options that they have available is, is crucial. I love that. Cause on this podcast, I'm always talking about practical, tactical fits in the budget type of situation, yeah. realizing that of course, and everybody has the same time in their day, the same, you know, children are not help or not re exactly resources or yeah. not education or not. And so even something like a microwavable lunch, I mean, there's, there's their whole gamut there. Yeah. If you're in an oh. office space or someplace that you were like, I just don't have time to cook myself a lunch or make myself a lunch or go out and grab a lunch. I bring a microwavable lunch getting some that you know when you're when it's a crappy microwavable lunch and there are really great options now so yeah. I love that when you're like let's talk about the label let's talk about yes ingredients and <laughs> try to make the best choice for you yeah absolutely for sure all right micronutrients let's talk about micronutrients and how is that different yeah. So with macronutrients, it's your, you know, if you have a food and you break it down into your protein, your carbs, or your fat, that's your macro. So macro kind of like large picture, right? And if you shrink in and you think micronutrient, smaller picture, it's what is that food made up of in terms of minerals, vitamin content, antioxidants. So what type of benefit does that food provide you other than just energy, right? Like uh, satiety, calories, it's beyond that. And so a lot of times, you know, a lot of times individuals aren't even thinking about that part yet because we haven't developed the understanding of what is this food providing for me in terms of my weight loss goal or my get more energy goal and feel good throughout the day. Um, and so you get the, the basic understanding of the macros first, and then you can say, okay, now it's actually what I kind of talked about earlier. It's taking that and using food as medicine versus just food in a sense of what am I going to accomplish by eating this calorically? Right. 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 So and how do you decide with somebody what their macro should be? Like if, if, if let's say I came to you, I came to yeah. you and I was like, I don't know what to eat, how to eat, how much to eat calories to eat. Where, where does somebody even start? Because man, that is overwhelming as well. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of, I, I do this a little bit differently. Uh, I think a lot of coaches might just plug in your information and I'll take your weight and your sex and your age and throw it in a calculator and it'll spit out your numbers. Right. Um, but I really like to see where a client is at right now. What are you doing now? So I'll typically have them track or log their food even if we haven't made improvements, mm -hmm. like literally what you're doing when you come in, because let's assess how much protein you're getting, how much fiber you're getting, and then build goals from there. Because if I just gave you numbers out of a calculator, you might be here, like low level, and then I just throw some numbers at you, which could be on the completely opposite side of the spectrum. That's a really hard jump to manage, yeah. especially when you haven't developed a foundation yet. So I usually take where you're at right now. How much are you eating now? How much fiber are you getting now? How much protein are you getting right now? And then say, okay, now let's take that up 20 grams. Mm -hmm. And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to add a protein shake for a snack, or we're going to do, you know, non-fat Greek yogurt with your breakfast and it's going to elevate your protein level. So it's just smaller jumps and it helps people understand how, where they're lacking and what they're currently doing. Because if you don't know what you're doing now and you don't know where you want to go, <laughs> you're not right. going to get anywhere. Right. No, my gosh, that's such a good point. And how often do you see, what are the trends that you tend to see when people do that and come in? I mean, do you find yeah. that not protein deficiency is common? Do you find under eating or overeating? Like what, what do you tend to see now? Yeah, I'd say the, the top three things would be under eating, mm. low fiber, and low protein. Mm -hmm. That'd be the top, top three across the board all day, every day. Which is I so interesting because, so when I was in practice, I would, uh, women were predominantly who I saw and weight yeah. loss, of course, was a number one goal for a lot of them. And I could understand how frustrating it was because they would say, I, I hardly eat, you know, I maybe have yeah. Protein shake for breakfast. I have a salad with a little little bit of chicken, you know, for lunch. I might have a bar for a snack, and then you know some dinner. And um, working with your team now, it's 
really been even more eye-opening to see the number of people who truly do, one, not understand macros, but two, are kind of starving themselves, but have obviously yeah. having the opposite weight reaction for other reasons. Oh, yeah. I, I think it's interesting. A lot of times people don't even know that they're, they're not purposefully under eating all the time. They're actually just so focused on eating clean and eating healthy that they are like unintentionally under fueling for their training style or their level of activity or their busy lifestyle. And they just don't even realize because they just really love salad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's great. Like, please keep eating your salad. But we also need to do X, Y, and Z because you're a busy mom, because you work full time, because you train four times a week, you know? Yeah. So it, it's, there is a lot of intentional dieting and restriction, but there's also a lot of, of females specifically who just don't realize how high their calorie requirement might be and how much better they might feel, how much more muscle they might build and see in their body composition if they were feeding and fueling the way that they should be. Um, so it's, it's very, very interesting to see that actually, because most people even come in, even when they're eating salad three times a day, they're like, am I eating too much? <laughs> okay, I can already tell you that you're not. <laughs> right, right. And I think I love that you said when you were trying to fuel somebody up, there's a plan. It's not like, you know, if you Eat whatever you want. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's not like you you uh, measure out their salads, you know, you get their macros and it's 1300 calories. And but yet again, right, they're super busy, full time yeah. job, you know, kids and training. And you're trying to get them up to a higher calorie count. It's not like, all right, go ahead and jump yourself up six, exactly. 700 calories tomorrow. Yeah. Like that would be yeah. detrimental. Yeah. Smaller, smaller steps. And actually a really great kind of hack to do that. Cause you know, a lot of the people who are under fueling, they're typically under fueling with carb mm -hmm. is, is the usual trend. Um, in a really great way, if you are someone that trains and, you know, you do weightlifting or, you know, maybe you do spinning, cycling, whatever it is, is to start adding in carbs around your exercise. So maybe not even changing the way that you're eating the rest of the day. If you're a little tentative or hesitant about adding the carbohydrates back in, you know, if you add them in before exercise and after exercise, that way we're really just stimulating and fueling muscle growth. Um, and we're not just jumping up your carbohydrate intake from zero to a hundred in the course of like a week. Right. Right. Do you find that there's a lot of hesitation for people to, they come to see you because they want to change, but they're also hesitant to change because you're about to change their portion size or maybe their calorie intake. And, and that can be hard. Yeah, it can be really hard. I, I would say 50, 50, there's, you know, 50% that are hesitant. And then the other 50%, it's like a breath of fresh air of I'm allowed to have that. Like I can eat a banana. That's not, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it, it's really six to one half dozen, um, in terms of the response, but I'd say, especially in the individual individuals who are a little bit more hesitant, um, taking small steps and also helping them understand the importance of carbohydrate for their body, for their lifestyle, and also letting, I think it's important, like what we talked about earlier, just because you're adding carbohydrate back in and developing, you know, sustainable, healthy habits, it doesn't mean that you can't use low carb as a tool mm -hmm. later on. There's so many tricks of the trade of carb cycling and, and you know what I mean? Intermittent fasting, like so many other modalities you could use to still get your result. So I never look at anything as like, this has to be forever, yeah. um, which can be very reassuring as well. Yeah, absolutely. With, so speaking of that, even just the foundations, when you, like, how do you help somebody shop or pair together a meal? Or, you know, there's a lot of people don't even know how to cook. Yeah. Nobody taught them how to cook, you know, boiling yeah. water. It's, that's a tough one. So where do you start with those people? Yeah. So usually we'll sit down and make a list together of proteins that they like. Mm -hmm. So we'll walk through that on a session and then make a list of all the carbohydrates that you like, the fruits that you like. Do you, do you like rice? Do you prefer potatoes? Do you enjoy sweet potato? And then also make a list of the fats that you have accessible. Is it olive oil? Is it avocado? Is it almonds? Um, and then I will lay out their plan so that they just kind of pick 
from the columns. So like, you know, lunch, you need a protein, you need a carb, you need a veggie, and you need to cook with a tablespoon of fat and you get to pick. So they'll know based off of their list, you know, they can choose their preferences, but it still keeps a, a structure around it for them. Um, and then in terms of individuals, well, <laughs> I'd say there are some people who just really don't like to cook. And so in that case, maybe we do, you know, meal prep options, meal prep companies, uh, you know, the Whole Foods has a great section where they just cook all the food for you. You just go in, you bring it home, and then you pair it together yourself. So there are other avenues to take. Um, and then if it is overwhelming or you're a very um, time-restricted lifestyle, you're on the go, you don't have a lot of time to put meals together, there's so many options to, um, you know, frozen chopped potatoes that don't take super long to heat up your proteins that are already cooked that you can throw together in a meal. So it is possible. You just have to think outside of the box. Mm -hmm. And again, it doesn't have to be black or white. It's, it's really living in the gray area of saying like, I can't cook my meals a hundred percent of the time, but what can I do? That's at least better than me going and, you know, grabbing fast food on the way home. Mm -hmm. And actually, so speaking of that, like the number of clients that come to see you, how popular is fast food? I mean, I know, popular, I know fast food is really popular, but generally by the time somebody is maybe coming to see you, are they still a fast food fanatic and they're looking to break that or have they worked through that? The only things, I, I'd say the, the two most popular ones, Chick-fil-A and Starbucks. <laughs> like, you know, Wendy's has like left the list, like McDonald's is gone by this time. We're not talking like Burger King. We're not, we're not talking like, you know, the real like greasy, like fast food, it's they're going to Chick-fil-A and they're getting a salad. Mm -hmm. But you look at the nutrition facts on a Chick-fil-A salad and we're not looking so hot there all the time. Like, it, you know, there, it's not always as balanced as we think that it is. So that's another thing that I always sit down with clients and say, it's unrealistic to say that you'll never eat out at these restaurants again. So let's look at the menu together and break that down and say, what is your best option or what do you usually order and how can we tweak it to make it more balanced? So we'll talk like, what's your Chipotle order? What's your Chick-fil-A order? What do you get at Starbucks? Because I think to be prepared in those situations versus oh, like, I didn't have time. I'm in a rush. Now I'm stressed. This isn't on plan, but Caroline's going to kill me. I'm going to get Starbucks anyway. Like, no, you know, they already know exactly what they're going to get when they go there and they can feel confident that it was still a good choice helping direct them to their goal. Oh my God. That's amazing. Our, <laughs> I have a Chick-fil-A. I'll be honest. I have never, ever in my whole life ever eaten a Chick-fil-A. I can't eat gluten. And so oh, uh, I'm yeah. celiac. And so for, I haven't had fast food, you know, every yeah. time, sometimes people are like, well, you can have the salad. I'm like, well, that's boring. I can make that at home. <laughs> Why would I go to, Right. If I'm going to fast yeah. food, I want fast food. Dang it. So yeah. I have never in my whole life had Chick-fil-A, but the Chick-fil-A like up the street from my house, the lines, yes. the lines, insane. insane. So oh my gosh. People are religious about their Chick-fil-A. I yes. had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I, I think it's a little bit overhyped. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong, but it's not, you know, it's not next level where I'd wait in that line that I see. Like never, never. That's, that's what I keep asking people. I'm like, is the line worth it? Yeah. Is that worth the is wait? It like, <laughs> go, is it golden chicken? Like, what do you get? You know, <laughs> what makes it so good? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. And then what about, I want to touch on things like fasting. You've mentioned like intermittent fasting. Um, do you find a lot of your clients are into that, hedging into that, asking about that? What do you do with that when they ask about fasting or intermittent fasting? So a very large percentage of individuals are doing it on accident mm -hmm. and then not fueling enough during the day because they're just skipping meals. They're waiting too long to eat. And then they're also not getting enough of the right things during the window that they are eating. And so applying a purposeful intermittent fasting time restricted window on top of that would do nothing. Mm -hmm. You're already doing it unintentionally, right? So I'm like, let's again, go back to the basics of eating within 30 to 60 minutes of waking. And then you're going to wait, you know, three hours and we're going to have a lunch and then we're going to have a snack and then we're going to have a dinner. And we get very, you know, a set structure to the day so that we can actually apply 
intermittent fasting as a stimulus where your body will respond. Yeah. Um, because I think that the fasting can be super helpful. I actually, and I know you and uh, Dr. Mindy Pelps, her book is yes. incredible. And I, I love, I've been using some of those strategies with my clients, but yep. I was, just saying, I was there, like, there, right. I'm like, right there. <laughs> <On your shelf. laughs> yes. Um, but you know, those don't work if a client has been skipping breakfast and lunch and getting a sugary coffee at like 1 p.m. for the last five years of their life, right? Like I, you know, the time restricted windows, it's it's literally out the window at yeah. that point in time. Like we can't do it. So we have to go back to the basics first and then again, use it as a tool where they're doing the correct thing in their window of eating. Mm -hmm. And then again, even, even like the, you know, fast, like a girl book, being able to cater it to their hormones throughout their cycle so that they're not just doing the same thing every day and not nourishing hormones, right. Or helping support blood sugar. So there's a lot of layers to that too. Yeah. Um, but just like dieting, if someone comes in under eating and they're like, I want to lose weight. Well, first thing I'm not going to cut your calories because right. you won't respond. Like you're already under eating. So you have to kind of do, it feels counterintuitive for a lot of people, but you have to get yourself back to the foundation first before you can apply a stimulus and actually expect a result. Right. And I think a lot of people are trying to do that on their own. And so they yeah. get fearful. I would have patients again, who were under eating um, and wanted to lose weight. And when I would bring that up of like, well, actually we need to have you fueled up, you know, and they'd have, yeah. some, I've been having hormone issues. I'm super fatigued. My skin doesn't look that great. My hair is falling out, whatever and the other symptoms were as well. Like, yeah. Well, you're actually under eating and I need to fill you up a little bit. And then they would panic. I'm like, well, I'm not going to do it all willy nilly. Like I'm not crazy. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, we're going to, we, we're going to have a, it does require a plan. And obviously it depends on the person, but, and I see yeah. you and your team do that all the time, but I can, I know, yeah. I remember the fear and patients who were like, well, I'm already eating 1200 calories a day. I'm like, Oh, your body yeah. is adapted to exactly like a little mouse no I, I know yeah and I I tend to get clients that m match my my personality right so like I'm a little more blunt I'm a little more forward and I will just straight up ask them I'll be like well what do you want to do cut your calories 500 more yeah <laughs> you know what I mean like when they're so stuck in that really low calorie range and they come in and they're under eating and they're like I want to lose weight the only option to go is up right yeah. now. Like yeah. you are in the bottom of the hole. So if we want to be able to put you in a deficit again, you know, I explain it in terms of cycles, like you're going to climb up and then you're going to go down and then you're going to climb up the hill and then we're going to go back down and then we'll do it again. And we'll do it as many times as we need to help you get the weight off, but you can't stay in the hole forever, which is yeah. what got you here. Right. Right. And the great thing is too, I want people to understand that you are doing a lot more than that, right? When so it comes to more. weight loss, it's a yeah. whole, as I say all the time, it's a whole ass system. So it's not yeah. like you're only micro controlling the calories. calories or, yeah. Like you are yeah. absolutely looking at, you know, all the hormones and gut health and stress and, you know, all the things that go into immune system. And, and I don't, I think when people are sitting at home and they're trying to Google or read somebody on Instagram about it, um, all they focus on is the calories, because of course yeah. that's all we've been taught through the years. Right not realizing that the whole system gets the dress literally as a whole. The exactly. calorie part is just one part of it. Yeah. And even with what you just mentioned, right? Like with the cycles of, of reversing and refeeding and bringing calories up probably won't go well if we've been under eating for a really long time and the thyroid isn't nourished and the adrenals are shot and the gut is all out of whack because we've been eating like fake sugar, low fat, you know, it's, there's so many other things that you address at the same time as you're maneuvering calories up so yeah. that you can get the best result and the body doesn't, you know, freak out, panic. So. Yeah, absolutely. And it takes time, which is what I, the other thing yeah, I love yeah. that you said, obviously, if you and I had a magic pill that would just let you, you know, I talk about magic pills all the time for all sorts of things like <laughs> progesterone or cortisol or whatever, testosterone. Yeah. But if we had a magic pill that was like, Hey, tomorrow you will be at your desired weight, body shape, whatever that is, we would not gatekeep. We would give it to you, mm -hmm. but that doesn't exist to, to truly do it in a healthy manner. It is going to take some time and, yeah. and working with somebody who knows what they're doing versus trying to Google search it and continue to cut calories. Absolutely. And sometimes yeah. what you do to get to your goal isn't always what you have to do to maintain it long term. Mm. 
So like the difference between that too, the difference between a short-term protocol or trying to reach a specific outcome mm -hmm. with food and all the different layers that go to it when you take a functional approach isn't always what the long-term habits forever for you to maintain that. Usually yeah. it's a little easier to maintain your outcome if you've developed the foundation and you've really learned through the process. And if you truly allow it to take the time that your body needs to get to that outcome, it makes the maintenance of the outcome so much easier. Yeah. But if you push and you push and you try to get there faster, that's where people have a really hard time maintaining their result. And they'll tell you that they'll come in and yeah, tell you, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, they, it was a roller coaster dieting, yo-yo dieting, yeah. or I, you know, worked, pushed it really hard. I lost 20 pounds, but then stress happened and I gained it yeah. all back. And, and it's the sharp up and downs. That's actually pretty detrimental to the body. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, Caroline, this has been amazing. I love <laughs> that you came and just like dropped all sorts of knowledge around the foundations because on this podcast, you know, we go, we go heavy into a lot of yeah. topics and I'm a big fan of the foundations. And so when I interview guests, I often say, you can, let's start with the basics and then we'll yes. build up from there. And I just so appreciate you coming on today. So where can people find you and all the places where they can, they find you on social media um, for those who yeah. want to learn more and uh, even maybe be a client because you're, you are taking clients. Yes. Yes. Slim, slim few. But yeah. <laughs> she also yeah. works with a network that are amazing. Yeah. So she does have several yeah. colleagues uh, that she can refer to as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram at the simply fit dietitian. Uh, and my website is that as well. The simply fit dietitian.com. So I love it. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being on today. This is yeah, so me. helpful and I just appreciate it as usual.